The time has finally come for the return of my traitor guard. <laughs> and how am I doing that? Well, it's thanks to Games Workshop sending us the brand new Solar Auxilla Battle Group. That's right, the tanks for the Imperial Guard have been looking a little bit old for a while now, and that's kept me away. But with brand new scopes for Lehman Rust tanks for Horus Heresy, it's time for me to convert and corrupt one of them up as a 40k traitor guard Lehman Rust. We've seen how great the new detail looks on the Rogal Dawn, but it's time for the rust to get its glow up. And that classic Mars pattern is just it's tabletop time. This video is sponsored by Hero Forge. So the box Games Workshop sent us today is the Solar Auxilla Battalion for the Horus Heresy. The Solar Auxilla are the Emperor's elite Imperial infantry fighting forces, some of the best of the best of the non-space Marines that serve in the Great Crusade. They have a really iconic look and I love their almost diving bell-esque, Bioshocky kind of vibe. Their heavy riveted plate armor and little nautical sub-themes. The box contains 20 infantry, a command squad, a Lehman Rust, and a Dracosian transport. And it is the Lehman Russ I'll be focusing on today. Personally, I would have preferred to see Mechanicus in plastic, but I'm not gonna complain about gorgeous new plastic sprues for the game I love. So while I don't think I'll be collecting the Solar Auxilla, for anyone out there who loves Solar Auxilla or Imperial Guard, I think this box is gonna be a great source of conversion bits or the foundation of many people's custom armies. So I can see it having use in 40K and 30K. But that's enough looking at sprues, it's time to build my Lehman Russ. So I got like two steps into the instructions, cut out two pieces and I'm already stumped. Cause I want to use these for 40K and these don't come with any sponsored mounts. They're just clear hatches. And I think that was deliberate by Games Workshop. What do I do? And right now I'm not sure if I should keep assembling it or if I should cut this little hatch open, pop it open, have a guy coming out with a heavy bolter. It might look a bit stupid. It's certainly tactically not very sound cause you're opening the side of your tank up to um, bombs and such. And given that I'm stalled on this, I'm actually going to skip ahead and I'm just going to build the turret so I can have an idea of what kind of space I'm working with at the top. I played around with a few ideas, including using one of these old extra Baneblade accessory sprues I had lying around, maybe making like a T28 tank with the sponsons on the front, but there really just isn't enough real estate. And to make a conversion like this, I'm going to so drastically have to change the chassis of the Lehman Russ that it's not really going to feel like a Lehman Russ anymore. All the pieces are going together gorgeously. I don't know which part of the design team does this, but the fits of these builds are going together amazingly. And as I finally did get back to the tracks, deciding on a course of action for how I was going to make some crazy top mounted flamers. I started fitting these tracks and these are so good. I think these are the best tracks ever in a Games Workshop kit. I don't know why it's so hard to do tracks that aren't just awkward to fit, but these, these just fall into place. I love them. They're so good. Uh, special kudos to the tracks on this and broadly building this Lehman Rust. It's so much better than in the old kit. I don't know how to quantify it. It's so small, but I, I'm going to talk about that a bit later, but it's it's just cool. And I'm throwing bits everywhere and I'm gonna keep building because I wanna see this thing done. The next big question I had was which weapon to choose. When I look at Lehman Russes, I've always loved the Vanquisher cannon and even just the standard battle cannon, but I have felt that the sculpts have been a little bit clunky. They don't look so good in modern day. Like the Vanquisher cannon, the bore is just ridiculous. Whereas the Forge World Mars patterns that this is based off have always looked a little bit nicer to me. This kit has a lovely Vanquisher battle cannon, but as I look at building it, I think to myself, what sponsons am I gonna fit with this? Ranged means last cannons and I I just can't see a way to get last cannons to work. So I'm gonna completely reframe my original thoughts around this vehicle and actually go with the Eradicator Auto Cannon. I've got enough Pintle Mount kits to mount these heavy flamers on the side. So I'm going to go for that as my sponsors. Three heavy flamers and the Eradicator Auto Cannons as this brutal anti-infantry tank that drives up the board, gets in your face and fires wildly. Now I'm gonna bring out some of my classic old Forge World discontinued Renegade Guard parts. And I love these bits. And these went together awesomely with the new Solar Auxilla Tank Commander, the arms fit on really well and it looks super nice. I did have a spare Rogue Sorcerer Staff from Blackstone Fortress and it looked perfect as an icon held aloft by the Tank Commander. So I decided to cut the hand off and basically jury rig myself a Solar Auxilla arm holding this staff. And with the other hand firmly gripped on a heavy stubber, my Commander fits nicely in the copula and looks like a super badass trader. For the sponsons, I decided to mount these heavy flamers on the back of the tank. 
Now, of course, in real life, this would mean the tank can't really rotate its turret without some awkwardness. I did check, and if it aims its guns way up and the dudes swing their guns to the left and the right, you could rotate the turret so it's not completely unusable, but uh, they're not too worried about that. They're looking at this as a jury rigged line breaker tank that just drives straight forward and shoots in a 180 degree arc. So, with that said, I have the opportunity to kit bash up a couple more renegade guys riding on the back of this tank, cowering behind the armor, and otherwise burning their foes with these heavy flamers. Using kit bash parts from the blooded kill team, my Forge World Renegades, and the Astra Militarum kits, I made two aggressive looking gunners for the back of the tank. Now the guy sitting on the left side of the tank doesn't go together nearly as smoothly as the one on the right. Flat feet don't work on the angled surface. And the one on the right has a bit of a gap in his arm. So I'm gonna bring out some milli part, throw some sandbags on the back of this tank, sculpt them up, fill those gaps and make it look really organic. I'm also gonna chuck a couple of sandbags in front of the guns so it makes it look like these people have really set this up as a defensive position. Kind of reminiscent of some of the old photos we see of World War II tanks. And with the milli putting done, there's only a few steps to go and this conversion will be finished. I had to go home for this. This is a relic. This is etched brass by Forge World and they don't make it anymore. They haven't made it in about a decade. I have two tiny sheets of this that I saved up for when I was young and this is all that remains. So this is like precious gold that I will be using on this trader gun. This stuff is so good. I wish they still made it, but um, I think this is gonna make all the difference. So let's get down to it. One of the great joys of collecting the hobby for a very long time is being able to go back at all of the cool things you've collected and those projects you maybe didn't finish, uh, such as all these Renegade Guard bits I've used on my infantry. But there's one piece I've never had a perfect use for. The Command Squad came with this like decapitated corpse and I don't know, carrying a dude's torso around on a banner, it's pretty hardcore. It also seems pretty heavy. Like that would be like 50 kilos held up on a banner. So I kind of just think it's a bit weird it's a great bit, but it's impractical. But, oh my gosh, this is a match made in heaven. I've realized the dozer blade at the front of this model, he fits in like a glove. So as horrifying as it is, I picture this being the previous commander of this tank before they turned, and he was tied onto this dozer blade. He wasn't dead at the time. He is now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna glue this on this great piece of Forge World Renegade history, glue it onto the dozer blade here, wrap some barbed wire around it and just make it look really brutal. And I think it's gonna be the final touch on this conversion. And uh, yeah, I'm really chuffed with it. And it was meant to stop recording. So I really wanted to do a comparison to the current Lehman Russ kit and the new Solar Auxilla one. So I asked Murray to bring in some Lehman Russes. And as a collector of Steel Legion, he had a box of tanks to share with me, including an unpainted one, which is also using the Exterminator Auto Cannon. The main thing I really wanted to point out is really the fidelity of detail. I often say the old tank kits don't hold up that well today. And a lot of people sort of question that. And I think that's because you assume a lot about a kit that you see from afar. But when we compare the older Lehman Russ kit one-to-one -to, -one to the new Solar Auxilla one and really see where Games Workshop can uplift the current designs of vehicles. In fact, the front of the Lehman Russ tanks is actually shockingly basic when you have a look at it. And the sides of the turret are nothing much to get excited about either. While I definitely think that tanks like the Lehman Russ are super iconic, I don't think we should be attached so heavily to a 20-year-old kit that we wouldn't be happy to see an update. Most of these kits have been around since the very early thousands or even the late 90s in some case for these vehicles. And I think when we look at these side by sides, we can see how you can keep the design, keep everything feeling the same, but completely revolutionize the way it feels. The depth of detail, the quality, even turning little things like this strange lug nut on the side of the tracks into something that actually makes sense. You can see the coils, the nuts, all those mechanical details are actually there. Things like the guns and gun barrels look a lot more finessed and a lot more realistic. And overall, I'm so happy to see the direction they're going with with these tanks. Let me know what you think? Do you agree that when you actually see them side by side, many of the tanks maybe 
don't hold up as well as you would have thought? Or do you think we should just leave them be? Either way, people like you and me are probably going to customize them. So if you enjoy unique and custom minis like the projects we make and want to create some of your own but want the easiest way to do it, consider Hero Forge. They are an amazing online program for creating your own custom digital minis. We've seen the addition of pets, the ability to pose multiple models together, and now the fully customizable face features that let you add age, wrinkles, completely change the proportions of your model so you can have exactly the character you want to create. Today, I wanted to celebrate my victory over loyalists by defeating a hero of their forces and making a model to commemorate that. So I decided to create one of their officers dead on the ground, which is something you can do in Hero Forge now. But there is even more on the horizon. Their kit bashing system is coming out soon. It is going to genuinely revolutionize the way we create custom miniatures online. I'm so excited. But if you want access to that, just like access to all the other early beta features, consider joining up to the Hero Forge Pro subscription. Their Pro Plus subscription actually includes digital STL credits every month. So you get heaps of value able to create and download multiple minis every month. So make sure you sign up to Hero Forge Pro to be one of the first to get to play with this new system. I've been an avid user of Hero Forge for a really long time for my personal D&D campaigns and my wargaming terrain building and diorama making. So I really encourage you to go check them out. The best way to do that is to use our code tabletop time for 10% off digital STL downloads. The links are in the description. So go follow them and show them some love and let them know that we sent you. But now with the tyrants defeated and my traitors liberated, it's time to paint this tank. One of the great things about the gorgeous new texture on this highly detailed kit is it means dry brushing is a great method for painting the armor. Most military vehicles in the modern world don't pick out all their different details. They generally paint the whole vehicle one color. That would be a little bit boring for painting models for miniature wargaming. However, I will use that methodology for the bulk of the armor panels. And for my Trader Guard paint scheme, that means a black spray followed by a dry blush, a dry blush, followed by a dry brush of Viejo Heavy Charcoal, and then a second dry brush of Skaven Blight Dinge, and a final dry brush focusing on the top areas, picking out rivets and lighter details with Storm Vermin Fur. I adore these two paints from Games Workshop. I use them all the time. The brown tinged greys are just fantastic. With this dry brushing done all over the model and picking out all that great detail, we can start to add a few little points of interest. I've done some vertical teal stripes along the sides of my tank, showing their loyalty in a subtle way to their Alpha Legion masters. I use sponging to paint these on because I think it looks really chipped and weathered as if it was painted on with an inappropriate tank for a war machine that's been rapidly worn off by the rigors of battle. One of the key things to making vehicles look good is creating texture on flat panels and that's why methods like sponging look so good to create that texture on these large flat areas. With the teal lines established I could go in and pick out just a little bit of mechanical detail. I used decayed metal by Viejo to paint some of the elements on the model that were mechanical in nature. This just breaks up the armor panels a little bit and I think this this dark brass really works with the design aesthetics of the Solar Auxilla tank. It's got a bit of a clockwork or an old diving suit vibe, which perfectly pairs with the rest of the paint scheme. Once these areas were done, I could come in with lead belcher, painting the tracks of the vehicle, as well as a lot of the mechanical components, such as gun barrels, exhaust pipes, or some of the hydraulics in the dozer blade. Once these colors were established, I added a slight highlight onto both the decayed metal using Liberator Gold, and also onto the silver very sparingly with some thrash metal and Stormhost Silver. Once this was done, I could heavily apply some washes, Agrax Earthshade onto the decayed metal areas, and Null Oil onto the silver. With this done, the bulk of the model besides the crew is actually painted, and I can move to picking out some specific spot details. Gold for the Chaos Emblem, a rare embellishment on these vehicles. Some gross, grotesque, fleshy stones, starting with the pallid, dead corpse on the front, bringing in some yellows and flesh tones for the organs that are exposed, and then covering that up with some juice juicy, juicy blood effects. There are a couple of lenses around the vehicle that get painted in a vivid green. And of course the Hunter Killer Missile needed to be painted as well. The sandbags I painted in khaki, highlighted with a off white and then washed down with Agrax Earthshade as well. With all these elements finished, there is still weathering to go. But next most important is to paint the crew, which is gonna be a little bit fiddly. But before I do that, I have a couple of thoughts about what I'd love to see come out next for Horus Heresy and Warhammer 40K in general. So with the tank all 
painted and just the crew left on top. I wanted to briefly talk about, well, my dream room. In painting this tank, I got to thinking about all the things I'd love to see them do. And I've said it once or twice on the channel, but I think it's time Games Workshop update their vehicles. As we showed you before, comparing this Lehman Russ to the currently available one shows just how much subtle increases in detail, fidelity, and texturing on these flat surfaces on vehicles can go to keep the same design, but just make it so much better and so much more modern. I think Games Workshop can certainly get away with not updating vehicles. They do the job, but when you see the brand new ones and what they can do, it just makes you excited. I for one would love to see a full range of Trader Guard get this treatment, getting things like the Stork Tank, which we've heard about a bunch, and some more evil stuff like that. The entire range of Imperial Guard vehicles being updated would be fantastic, but even if they don't, I've got the Solar Auxilla vehicles they've announced that I can use to convert for Trader Guard. It's really cool to see these new designs, but it does highlight to me the areas that are lacking. I would love to see brand new tanks for Chaos Space Marines, that would be super cool, that aren't demons with skin growing all over them for some reason. And I think for many armies, the vehicles are the last holdout of the old designs and the old styles that kind of stopping the range from feeling completely fresh and updated. You only have to look at some of the vehicles in the Imperial Guard kit, which are serviceable, but showing their age, such as many of the Chimera chassis vehicles, and well, even the ubiquitous Lehman Russ with its giant bore cannon that an infantry soldier could climb down like a circus cannon. But that ain't Horus Heresy, so Horus Heresy is where we're getting new plastics. If that's the case, give me Mechanicum, it's time. We've got Solo Auxilla, they're great, I can't wait to see all those updates, but uh, I think the boys and girls from Mars need a bit of love, and I'd love to see Cybernetica, but even new and expanded units to make all that stuff super accessible for everyone. I really hope we do get that stuff, but only time will tell. Until then, we have conversion and doing our own custom stuff. So on that note, I should get back to finishing my custom stuff and painting these infantry. Now these incorporate a color not used in the tank, which is their fatigues, which are painted in stonewall gray. Now a lot of forces use contrast between their armor color and their fatigue color, but I've gone for a slightly more realistic planetary defense force vibe where their uniform is all basically the same color and a similar color to their environment. They fight on a gray ash waste, so they wear gray fatigues with gray armor. And that gray armor is painted Skaven Blight Dinge. And then I also pick out the silver areas on the model, which on models without weapons typically ends up being things like gas mask tubes and various cables and bits on their belts. With these colors established, I can put a null oil wash over the whole miniature. And then I can re-highlight the stonewall gray with itself and the Skaven Blight Dinge with Storm Vermin Fur. It's so the bulk of the boring part of their paint scheme done, the part that kind of is meant to fade away and provide context to everything else. Now I can move on to the browns and spot colors. Use charred brown and then beastie brown to paint all of the leather elements such as the cowls that they wear on the head, their belts and their pouches, and then decayed metal with a liberator gold highlight for all of the brass metallics on them, which mostly ends up being their little rebreather packs on those classic Forge World Renegade pieces. These are both washed down with Agrax Earthshade at the same time. With these colors established, I can paint the spot details on these soldiers, which includes skin on the bareheaded grinning guy, which I like to make extremely pallid and unwell, focusing on some really, really unhealthy white tones with nice blues and purples and reds in the shading. Kind of reminiscent of the Helgarn from the game Killzone. With the infantry painted, I can focus on bringing the whole piece together with some weathering. Armored sections get some charred brown and then all the way up to orange sponging just on edges and corners to create a small rust effect on the vehicle. I don't go too overboard with this as I don't want these vehicles to look like rust buckets who've been out for ages, but instead ones that have been maybe not properly maintained in the last year or so since they were taken from the Imperium. With that done, I can put a whole bunch of burnt umber weathering pigment all over the lower areas. This dark reddish soil that's churned up from the under layer of ash on my world just gives a really nice visual contrast with all the grays and ties in with the browns of the leathers and metals on the model. Because I have lovely etched brass numbers on my tank, that brings it to completion and we can check it out in some reveals. And of course, a big thank you to our patrons. Without you, we wouldn't have been able to make this video or any videos for that matter. You really do keep us going. And as I've mentioned a few times, we're going to Adepticon. And if any of you are going to be at Adepticon, please don't hesitate to come up and say hi to me or the team. 
we'd really love to meet you and say thank you in person. And a hearty welcome to our newest patrons, Paige Bonifaci and Dark Dragon Sevens. Welcome to the club. I look forward to chatting with you in the Discord. And of course, a final thank you to the sponsor of this video, Hero Forge. Absolutely do go check them out and we can't wait to share more exciting news from Hero Forge with you soon. This has been an absolute treat. I'm so glad Games Workshop are revisiting Astra Militarum vehicles, even if it is through the lens of Solo Auxilla and 30K. I certainly now have a route to add all all of these cool armored vehicles to my 40k force. The Mars pattern was already cooler, but as I showed in the side-by-sides earlier, the higher detail and just the bits on these kits are so nice. And it's worth coming up with weird and wacky ways to get spawns and weapons on these things just to get to use these really nice updates. Definitely a glow up. I can't wait for units like the Basilisk. They showed off the Solo Auxilla Basilisk. That's gonna be awesome. And the Malkador is a Forge World classic that you can still use through Legends. So that will be really Really sweet to use in armies too because I, I mostly just play with friends anyway so it doesn't matter. I hope you enjoyed and if you want to see more of the Traitor Guard let me know because I'm really living like Traitor Guard Alpha Legion Chaos Knights right now. They're all super fun to paint. I think this is going to be a fantastic addition to that force. So um, thanks for watching everyone. We'll catch you in the next one. Oh no Dave our flight is leaving. We have to go. Jen we fly out um, next Thursday. Oh. Yeah I've got a whole nother video to film in between now and then. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you can just, yeah, thanks.